Now we continue with our study of uh, infinite series. In the part one, we discussed geometric series, and now we will uh, study general series. Here is the definition. Let A1, A2, A3, and so on, A sub n, and so on, be a sequence of numbers. Uh, now, we're not uh, um, discussing the limit. We form another sequence. We define a sequence of partial sums which is defined this way. S1 will be A1, S2 will be, just a second, S2 will be A1 plus A2, S3 will be A1 plus A2 plus A3, and continuing like that, we come to S sub n, which is A1 plus A2, plus a3, plus and so on, a, a sub n, and we continue with this process. Uh, a sub n is called sequence of partial sums. Partial sums. And now we are interested in the limit of this sequence, the sequence of partial sums. If limit S sub n, let's call it S, exists. We call it infinite series. And this is the notation. Infinite uh, summation. A sub k. k from 1 to infinity. Uh, this is S, the limit of partial sums. So, Let's uh, write again, this is a limit of A1 plus A2 plus 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 A sub n. So we have here a sequence indexed by n, and the limit of this sequence is the infinite series. So that's how we define infinite series in terms of sequences. The sequence of partial sums should be convergent, so we have such infinite sum. Uh, and uh, when this limit here exists, this uh, series called convergent series. Series. If uh, limit S sub n does not exist, This infinite uh, series, this symbol, is called the divergent series. Divergent series. Uh, we don't associate a number with it. We just call it divergent series, and that's it. From this definition, a very important uh, theorem follows. This is our theorem. If this uh, series, I shall write index n now, a sub n, from n from 1 to infinity, if this is uh, convergent, then the general term a sub n has limit 0. general term is a convergent sequence with limit zero. And the proof is very simple. Remember how we defined S sub n. Uh, here is the proof. So we have uh, S sub n is uh, a1 plus a2 plus 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 
let's write the previous one a n minus one plus a n and let's write also the form for s n minus one the previous partial sum it goes a1 plus a2 plus 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 a n minus 1 up to here. And now when we subtract these two, uh, you see uh, only a sub n will be left. So s n minus s n minus 1 is a sub n. And now when the, the series is convergent, This means that the limit S sub n exists. Let's call it S. Uh, limit S n minus 1 is the same, because this is the same sequence, only the index is shifted. The limit doesn't change. So these two sequences have both limit uh, S, and then I can write limit a sub n will be limit s sub n minus limit s n minus 1 because a sub n is the difference of these two sequences. And the result will be s minus s, which is 0. So limit a sub n equals 0. That's what we wanted. From this uh, Simple but important theorem, we derive a simple and important test. It's called the divergence test. It says this, given one series, general term S sub n, I'm writing usually the index starting from one, that not important, you can start from 0, from 2. So given a, a series, if a sub n, the general term, does not approach 0, does not have limit 0, then the series is divergent. Why divergent? Because if it is convergent, the general term should approach zero. So if the general term does not approach zero, the series divergent. Important divergence test, which we can use to test for convergence or divergence different series. Let's put this test in a green box because it's important. Uh, I want to tell immediately that uh, if a sub n approaches zero for some series, it does not bring to convergence. Then uh, the series with this general term may diverge. Oh, I will rewrite this not written very well, not very clear. This series may be divergent. And I want to give you one example immediately. Uh, look at this. I'm writing now a series with general term 1 and n goes from 1 to infinity. We have this infinite series, 1 plus 1 half, plus 1 third, plus 1 fourth, plus, 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 like that to infinity. This is called harmonic series. This series is called harmonic series. It's a very important uh, series in mathematics, and used for different, it appears often. And now, this series is divergent. The sequence of partial sums does not converge. The partial sums here are called harmonic numbers. 
these are the partial sum one plus one half one third plus 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 one eighth and uh, harmonic numbers the this, this sequence grows to infinity does not converge at all but uh, the general term of the series one eighth approaches zero so we see uh, if the general term approaches zero, it doesn't mean the series is convergent. Now, we shall prove that the harmonic series is divergent in our next lecture when we talk about uh, the integral test. Uh, okay, now we continue working with the series. Uh, I shall do different examples. And it's good to review the geometric series, which we studied in the first part. Study for convergence divergence. If convergent, evaluate. And let's take this uh, series. 1 over 3 power n, where n goes from 1 to infinity. And if I write it this way, one third all of it power n we can recognize immediately a geometric series so it's uh, one third plus one third squared plus one third cubed plus 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 like that to infinity one third is uh, in absolute value less than one so it's uh, a convergent geometric series and we can evaluate it uh, but we cannot evaluate it immediately because it doesn't start from 1. So I have to factor 1 third, and then we have here 1 plus 1 third plus 1 third squared plus and so on in the parentheses. And now I can use my formula. So this will be 1 third times 1 over 1 minus 1 third. And uh, this will be one third multiplied by one over two thirds will be three halves. Reducing by three, we have one half. This is the value of the series. So this series is convergent, we can evaluate it. When we have geometric series, we want to evaluate them. Now, uh, I want to remind the formula because it's important. That I just used formula is this. 1 plus x plus x squared plus and so on to infinity equals 1 over 1 minus x when x is less than 1 in absolute value. Uh, and I want to put this in green to pay due respect to this formula. Okay. Another example. Look at the series the general term n plus 1, 5n plus 1, where n goes from 1 to infinity. Convergence, convergent or not? Uh, here we shall study the general term a sub n. a sub n is n plus 1 over 5n plus 1. Uh, we can see easily that this sequence of general terms that has a limit. I can factor n like we usually do with such sequences. Reducing by n, this is 1 plus 1 n over 5 plus 1 n. And it has limit 1 plus 0, 5 plus 0, so the limit is 1 fifth. Very good. This sequence of general terms is convergent, but the limit is not zero. One fifth is not zero. So our series, the series is divergent by the divergence test. Divergent because the general term does not approach zero. Another example, take the series of general term arc tangent n. 
for n again from 1 to infinity. This is uh, arc tangent 1 plus arc tangent 2 plus 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 like that n grows to infinity. The general term is uh, this arc tangent. And uh, we know about the behavior arc tangent that arc tangent x approaches pi over 2 when uh, x grows to infinity. So our general term arc tangent n will approach pi over 2 when n grows to infinity, and this is not zero. So our series is divergent. The series is divergent by the divergence test. That's, that's it. Now look at another example from the book. We have series, general term is root of 2 power negative k, k from 1 to infinity. What can we say about this series? Convergent, divergent. I shall write with positive power. 1 over root of 2 power k in denominator. And then I can rewrite it like geometric series. Uh, I can rewrite in this one, which shows immediately it's a geometric series. Geometric series which is convergent because root of 2 is bigger than 1, 1 over root of 2 is less than 1, between 1 and 0. So this uh, geometric series will be convergent. To evaluate it, however, I, I need to factor 1 over root of 2 because it starts from 1. When you factor this, we have 1 over root of 2 power k, now k starts from 0 to infinity, I can use the formula, and this will be 1 over root of 2 times 1 over 1 minus 1 over root of 2, the ratio, and uh, we multiply here top and bottom by root of 2, and it comes to this, root of 2 on top, root of 2 minus 1, reducing, we have our limit. This is uh, the limit of the partial sums, the value of the series. Series convergent, geometric series, and this is the value of the series. Another example. Look at the series with general term 1 over 1 plus 2 thirds power n. And let's go from 1 to infinity. Now, uh, we remember from uh, sequences that if we have a number less than 1, then the consecutive powers approach 0. So here, 2 thirds power n will approach 0. The general term of the series, a sub n, is 1 over 1 plus 2 thirds power n. It has limit, obviously. The limit will be 1 over 1 plus 0, which is 1. Uh, very well, the general term of the series has a limit, but this limit is not 0, and we conclude that our series is divergent. Divergent, again, by the divergence test. Our next example, look at the series with general term natural log 2n plus 1, here uh, n plus 3 denominator, and n changes from 1 to infinity. So the general term of the series is this. Uh, we can find limit here. We have done this for sequences. Limit a sub n. This will be limit natural log 2n plus 1 
n plus 3. Uh, and uh, because the logarithm is continuous function, I can bring the limit inside the logarithm. So we have logarithm limit to n plus 1, n plus 3. And this limit we can evaluate. Uh, you can factor n and uh, reduce. This will be logarithm limit uh, 2 plus 1 n, 1 plus 3 over n. And uh, one end approaches 0, so we have natural log limit, natural log 2 plus 0, 1 plus just 2. The limit is logarithm of 2, which is not 0. And again, we conclude that our series is divergent. Divergent by divergence test. So very often we have uh, series where the general term uh, is, is a convergent sequence. The general term uh, constitutes a convergent sequence, uh, but uh, the series itself is divergent. Even when the general term approaches zero, the series may be divergent. Remember the harmonic series. Uh, it is very important when you study sequences in series not to confuse sequences in series because I have seen this very often. Uh, a typical mistake is this. Uh, we are given infinite series and then uh, the general term has limit, let's say it approaches some limit L. And then uh, the student says this uh, all approaches L. Does it make sense? So don't confuse sequences and series. The series is a limit of sequence of partial sums. Uh, and uh, the general term uh, can tell m much about uh, the series, but uh, the limit of the general term is not the, the value of the series. I want to finish uh, today's lecture with one very nice, interesting infinite series, this one here, which we can evaluate directly. We can evaluate it by uh, studying the partial sum. The partial sum S of n will be uh, 1 over 1 times 2, when n equals 1, this is what we have the first term, plus 1 over 2 times 3, when n is 2. And then when n is 3, we have 1 over 3 times 4, and continue like that. Uh, we have at the very end 1 over n, n plus 1. Now, we can decompose each of these terms. If you have uh, 1 over k, k plus 1, you can break it in simple partial fractions this way. Uh, to verify this, uh, you just need to write a common denominator. If you can write common denominator, first, uh, <coughs> A fraction you have to multiply by k plus 1, second by k, so it becomes k plus 1 minus k, k, k plus 1, so this is obviously what uh, we started from. So we have this decomposition. Let's ap apply it for each of the above terms. So S of n we can write 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2. Then one half minus one third, then uh, one third minus one fourth, and we can continue like that. Uh, at the very end, uh, we have outside the last but one, one over 
n minus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 n minus 1 over n plus 1. And this is the partial sum, nth partial sum. If we remove the parentheses, you see many things will cancel out. Negative one third plus one third. Negative, uh, negative one half plus one half. Negative one third plus one third. And like that, you can pair them and they cancel. Uh, almost everything cancels out. Uh, here, negative one and plus one and will cancel out. Only the very first and very last number will not cancel out. Uh, one over one will stay. I can write just the very first and the very last. So S of n is 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. And this has a limit. The limit is obviously 1. 1 over n plus 1 approaches 0. So our series is convergent and the value is 1. Let's put this uh, also in green. It's a nice series. It's called telescoping series because you see how when you write the partial sum, it shrinks to just two numbers. Uh, such a telescoping effect. And uh, why telescoping effect? Because uh, 100 years ago, people were using uh, such uh, telescopes which are uh, shrinking and expanding uh, when you want to use them. And uh, this is what this series uh, does almost the same. It shrinks to, uh, all the series uh, shrinks to number one, practically. Okay. Uh, this is the end of the lecture. Next time we shall study the integral test for series. Goodbye.